So did I ever think about myself as a cross-dresser? I think I'd have to say yes from early on. It's just, it's almost liberating to have this, this flowing material around you like that. It's pleasant. <laughs> I wish I'd done it long ago. I was confronted with the issue of trying to be a, quote, normal young man, but at the same time knowing that I was a cross-dresser. It caused great mental anguish. But yes, I knew I was that kind of person. I appeared on MIT's doorstep in 1956. You're dealing with large areas of the Earth's surface in some region. John Southard is possibly the greatest teacher I have ever known. I'm surprised to hear that I'm the only one of John's professional colleagues that has gotten to see him as Tefra. I will never forget that occasion. It was arresting. The word Tefra is the Greek word for ash. It's a geological term, technically. And so I decided, well, it sounds like a girl's name, so I became Tefra. If I had been widowed or divorced earlier in life and had met somebody like Jean, I would have ended up like Tefra at an earlier stage, which would have been nice. Jean knows that I'm happy to be a man and that I'll always be her husband as a man. She is more than accepted. I could describe her as my enthusiastic accomplice. <laughs> when Tefra came out, there was this euphoria in the beginning, this absolute glow. There's this general feeling among people like me that we have to make up for lost time, and I'm making up for lost time.